G'day guys, welcome to 5 Minute Friday. Today we are talking about seven different ways that you can capture objects in the sky and the night sky with your iPhone. Doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter what your experience is, this is dead set simple, you're gonna get into it. So here in Australia, we are well and truly into the Milky Way season. The Milky Way is rising up above us here and you can capture this with your iPhone. There's two ways you can do it. One is handheld, one is with a tripod, let's do both. So the first one here is handheld night mode. If you've got an iPhone 11 or later, you're going to be able to do this. It needs to be dark enough. All you need to do is go into the camera and up the top left hand corner, there'll be an icon there, it's yellow, and it will have a duration. It might say one, two, three, or even 10 seconds on that little icon. All you need to do is push that, a little scroll will come across the bottom there, go all the way to the right so it's as maximum amount of time as you can, hold on to something reasonably sturdy like a fence post, a sign post, something like that, and take the photo. As you take the photo, there'll be a small cross if it's a later version of the iOS, a small cross that comes up, helps to keep it in line, and there you go, a night mode photo, all done. The next thing that we're going to do is capture the Milky Way with the iPhone. The Milky Way, that galactic core, that orange gaseous cloud that you see in so many photos, you can do it on the iPhone, I'll show you how to do it. First of all, what you need to do is work out where it is in the sky. You need to be away from town, you need to be away from light pollution, nice clear skies, no cloud, no moon, and you're going to be able to capture photos like this. So to find out where the Milky Way is in the sky, I use an app called Photopills, I'll link it down the bottom. Photopills is a fantastic app for finding the galactic core and different things in the sky at different times of the year. It's a really, really good tool for doing what we're about to do. So open up Photopills, go into the uh, night augmented reality, night IR, and hold the camera up, because it uses the camera that's on the phone, and you can see there the galactic core, that orange gaseous cloud, is sitting up fairly high in the night sky. So what we need to do is find a subject that is reasonably high, shoot from down below, and the Milky Way will be up behind it. Let's do this tree over here. Before we get into this though, we want to turn on a couple of things in the settings in the camera. So if we go into settings and go to camera, if you've got an iPhone 12 Pro, you're going to want to enable Pro Raw. So go into camera, go to formats, and make sure the box for Pro Raw is switched on. Go back, turn off scene detection, and turn off Smart HDR. And then we're gonna get the best photos we can of the night sky with the iPhone. So to set this photo up, I've got the iPhone 12 Pro Max on a tripod. You don't have to use an iPhone 12 Pro Max, but you do need night mode. So on a tripod, it's sitting lower than this tree. And I've got this tree lit up, and I'll light it differently when we take the photo, but the reason it's down low, the reason the tree is here, is because the Milky Way is up the top here. So what we're gonna do is go into night mode, turn on Pro Raw, take a 30 second photo, and whilst that photo is being taken, I'm going to light this tree from a different angle with the Wubin torch that I use for all my light painting photos. The way we're gonna do this is take two photos. We're gonna take one photo with the foreground subject, so it's in the subject that we're shooting, and then another photo, a 30 second photo focused on the stars, and we're gonna merge those together and get this sort of photo. So when we're taking the first photo, we're gonna shine the light onto the tree, and we're gonna focus, touch, and hold, so the focus and the exposure is locked for this photo, and it's locked onto the tree, so the leaves will be nice and crisp and sharp and in focus. So we'll turn this light off, I'll take the photo and light the tree. So that's the first photo done, it looks pretty good. What we need to do now is capture the Milky Way without moving anything. The tripod, the phone, nothing can move. So we want the, exactly the same photo, just focusing on different parts of the image. So we're gonna do the same thing, but instead of touching on the, where the tree is, we're gonna to touch up where the sky is and take another photo. So with those two photos, what we're going to do is get this photo and this photo, and we're going to create this photo. And hang around at the end, I'll show you how we get those two photos combined. The next thing we're gonna look at is time-lapse and night-lapse photography with the iPhone. So on the iPhone 12 Pro series, you've got night-lapse capabilities, and it does it for you automatically. All you need to do is go into the camera, scroll across to where it says time-lapse, and it will detect that it's dark enough, and it will do it night mode, all automatically. You won't see anything different happening on the interface on the camera, but it just does it for you. So what we've got here is a basketball hoop set up just here. This is in my backyard, and I'm going to do a five hour time lapse. No, let's make it all night. We'll do an all night time lapse with this mode. So what we need to do is go into camera and scroll across to where it says time lapse. That's it. Compose the photo. It's going to have to be on a tripod. Compose the photo. 
so that the stars and any subjects that you want are in the photo. Hit record and that's it. You're done. You just go away and wait for it to be done. Now this can go for as long or as short as you want. The longer it goes, the more frames in that video, the end resulting video, that the iPhone will present you. So you could shoot all night, and this is how long this one took all night. I won't let you play it all, I'll just fast forward in the video, but this is how long it actually did shoot for. I'm gonna show you another method in the moment, and I think it's actually better. I've actually tweaked this video a little bit for the best that I can possibly get out of it from the night mode time lapse that the iPhone does. Got lost inside your light Like I always seem to do When you show me the truth A couple of pointers with doing this. One, you're going to want a tripod. It needs to be dead still for the whole time. Two, if you're going to shoot all night, you're going to want a power bank or something like that because the phone battery just won't last all night to do an all light time lapse and if it does it's probably not going to have much left in the morning so i always use a power bank when i do this and it's dead set simple to set up and it will just run off the power bank power all night the second way of doing this or method number four that we're talking about here tonight is with nightcap app using time lapse functionality on it and my honest opinion it's better than what the iphone does if you're not familiar with nightcap app it lets you capture night mode photos, night photos, photos of the stars and so forth, it doesn't have to be an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 12, you can do this with the earlier model iPhones. So down the right hand side here you've got gallery, settings, flash and you've got a photo of a camera and that picture of the camera there is where we want to touch on and it's going to change it to time lapse and we're set. All you need to do then is touch the sky, focus on a star, hit the record button and it's the same principle as what the iPhone did in night mode. The difference is it doesn't automatically shorten anything. It's going to take a photo or video for the whole time until you come back and push that button again. And this is what it looks like. Now with both of these time lapse, I've developed it a little bit in uh, Final Cut Pro so that you guys can see the best that I can possibly get out of both of these. And I think you'll agree the Nightcap app does a better job with time lapse photography, time lapse video at night for the iPhone. So let's look at number five. So number five is capturing objects in the sky that are man-made. This can be a little bit controversial in the astrophotography world. There's that much crap up there that we throw into the sky for different sorts of reasons. There's satellites, there's space stations, there's junk up there like nothing else. But you can capture it in photos and they can be pretty bloody cool. If you're in a light polluted area and you can't capture photos like we've just done with the Milky Way and the galactic core and you can't see that, this actually gives you a nice alternative to try and capture at night because you can see these things, well, pretty well anywhere in the world. The main difference in capturing things like the International Space Station to versus, say, the Milky Way is that Milky Way is moving at a glacial pace. It is so slow and you can plan around it really, really well. The International Space Station, that sucker is moving quick and to capture it at night, it takes a lot more planning than your simple... Um, astrophotography photo let me explain one you want to do this in the pre-dawn hours and the post sunset hours and the reason for that is the earth is sitting here the international space station is sitting just a little bit above it and if you're looking from the dark side of the planet and the sun's still shining light onto that space station it's going to look pretty spectacular it's going to look like a really really bright star moving through the sky really bloody quick there are a few apps that will help you out as to locating where the International Space Station is. The one that I use is called Night Sky. I'll link it down the bottom. It's a pretty good app. It's free. You can pay for it as well and it gives you more features. But for what we're talking about here tonight, it's, uh, it's dead set free. If we go into Night Sky, you'll see here, um, it's going to give me a little pop up here to say, hey, you want to pay for this? And chances are I'm probably going to pay for this. I'll use it a fair bit. Uh, I'll close out of that. And basically it's going to use the um, gyro and the GPS in the camera, in the phone, um, to show you what's in the night sky and it does a pretty bloody good job you can see where the galactic core is see i can hold it up there and the galactic core is right up there above us it's got all different um, star signs and that sort of big constellations if you're in that sort of thing um, planets it's going to show you satellites let me just point it down to the ground here um, see all those lines of blue 
they're those Starlink satellites, those trains of satellites, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But where I've put that pink arrow, or pink dotted line, is for the space station. And that gives me the path of where the space station is going to move in the next you know, few hours. We scroll down and you can see a search bar there. Hit in the search bar, type ISS, and in this case I've already done that, it's something that I've searched for pretty regularly. So I'll just click on that, it'll show me what it looks like, hit directions, and it's going to give me an arrow. And as I move around, you can see that little arrow is pointing out there. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see there's the International Space Station. If I hold this really still, you can see it's moving, and it's moving really fast. So if I touch on that ISS now, it'll show me a dotted line. And this is where the planning comes into it. Because this thing moves on different trajectories all through the, around the planet all the time, uh, it's going to be moving above the horizon, not quite. So this pass is not going to do for a photo, but the next pass may well be up higher in the sky. And that's the sort of thing that we want to capture. In fact, here's some examples of what I've done. So if you set this app up and you set the alerts on this app, it will actually give you alerts to say the ISS is passing over right now. It didn't give me one for this pass because it's just below the horizon and it knows that I'm not going to capture it. But when it's above the horizon, it will give you an alert to say it's passing right now. And those alerts will only come a couple of hours before sunrise and a couple of hours after sunset. And how do you actually capture this? Well, there's an app for that. We use the Nightcap app. Now with the Nightcap app, all you want to do is go into it and down the bottom right hand corner you've got that star all you do is touch on that star and go to where are we iss mode iss mode that's it and it does it all for you automatically all i do now is touch on the sky where a star is and we're done we're good to go the way that i set up the photo though is using the night sky app with that pink dotted line and i will set that up whilst it's on the tripod and move that so that when the dotted line is coming through the photo that i've just composed and then go into Nightcap app, hit ISS mode, and you end up with photos just like this. The other thing that you can capture in the night sky if you live in a light polluted area is satellites. If you go back into that night sky app and you can see all those Starlink satellites, it, it's a, there's a lot of it up there. You can compose the photo and you end up with satellites moving through the photo, like trains of light if it's the Starlink satellites, and they can take some pretty cool photos. All you do is exactly the same thing. You look on the night sky app and you see where they're moving through the sky. You compose the photo just like the ISS, go into ISS mode, and you end up with photos just like this. The seventh thing that we're gonna to shoot tonight is star trails. Now, star trails exist, the functionality exists on the Nightcap app, and that's what we're going to use tonight, but we're gonna use it slightly different. We're gonna use a different technique. We're going to use the star trails mode on the Nightcap app, and we're going to do something similar to what we did with the tree before, as in taking two photos and merging them together. So, if you don't do it that way, what you end up with is photos like this one here, and I did this one with the posty bike, my old posty bike, and the star trails themselves look fantastic, but if you look closely at the, at the motorbike, it's not really formed really well. The computational photography in this has kind of screwed it up and it doesn't look that good at all. But if I did it a different way, if I took a photo of the motorbike and then didn't move anything and took the photos of the star trails, it would look a lot better. Let's go on to this uh, fence post over here and I'll explain why we're doing a fence post versus what we did with the motorbike. So what we're gonna do here this way right here is south, pointing straight out there. I'm in the southern hemisphere, so if you're in the northern hemisphere, you want to be pointing north. And what we're going to do is instead of having these lines of the star trails that kind of come out like that and they concave against each other, that's when you're not pointing to one of the poles. So when you want these nice circular star trails, you need to be pointing at one of the poles. And the way that I work out and compose this photo is with photo pills. So what I do is I open up photo pills and go into the night augmented reality. If I turn right around here, where that circle is, it's dead set south. And if I put that right above the post and take the photo right here, it's going to have a nice circular sort of a time lapse. So with the phone on a tripod now, I've opened up photo pills, I've moved photo pills so that I can set up the phone with the tripod and the phone sitting 
just in line with that pole that's here and the southern pole in the sky is just above it. So when we take this photo with the star trails and if we leave it open for long enough and we're talking about it about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, we're going to have some nice circular stars going around the top of that pole. But we're going to take two photos like I said before. So now that we're set up right, we mustn't move the tripod. It's got to stay exactly where it is. So then what we're going to do is go into the camera app and use just like what we did before with the tree, we're going to focus on the post, take a 30 second photo, light it from one side only, because it's just a post, so one side's perfectly enough to light this, this subject. Light it with the Wubin torch, and we'll end up with a photo just like this. After we've taken that photo, in pro mode, 30 seconds, we're going to go into Nightcap app, go down the bottom, touch the bottom where it says, where it's got the star there, and then go into star trail mode, and that's it. We touch on this top, touch on one of the stars there to focus it, hit the shutter button, and walk away. And we wait for a good hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and we come back, and we've got this sort of photo. So as I said in the beginning, we're gonna merge some of these photos. Let's have a look at the tree one first, the photo we took with the tree in the foreground, the milkery up behind it. So we're going to go into the gallery and go to edit on this photo. The edit then hit the auto button, and it's going to do what it thinks is the right thing to do as far as that galactic core goes. Keep in mind, this phone app took the photo, so let this phone app fix the photo, or edit the photo. The auto did a pretty good job. We're gonna scroll all the way to the right hand side. Second from the right is noise reduction, and we're gonna push this almost all the way to the left hand side. We're going to go to tint, and increase the tint a little bit to add some magenta to it, and the warmth as well, and a little bit of warmth saturation a little bit of that and we're looking for now for the black point which is the next one and we're going to increase the black point a little bit so it comes a little bit brighter in the sky and we look now for contrast and we're going to increase the contrast and that's all we're going to do with this hit done now so what we're going to do is bring that photo first of all the photo from the stars we're going to bring that into snapseed and here it is here we don't need to do any editing to this at all because we've just done that in the gallery what we're going to do is go down to tools and go to double exposure. And what we're going to do now is add that first photo, with we want the one that we painted the tree with the light. So we'll add, click down the add, find that second photo, it's the add photo. And there it is, you can see in the foreground there, those tree leaves are dead set on point, they're nice and sharp and focused. So what we're going to do is go to the little tent icon there, and you can see there you've got a few different options to the way that you combine these two photos. So what we're going to do is go to lighten and that's it and hit the tick button. From there we're going to go up the top and hit the back button and the revert button and the view edit button. So we go down to view edits and we're going to go double exposure and hit that brush tool that's there. And what we're going to do now is hit the icon to show us where the masking will be and we're just going to paint in now the zero. So we're not going so we're going to take out that second photo, we're going to take the sky out of that second photo that we've just put in. So we're using the sky from the, the photo that we took that was focused on the sky, and we're going to combine it with the photo that was focused on the leaves. And this is pretty rough because it's just for this quick video. You can go a lot finer with this and go in amongst the leaves and so forth. I'm going to hit the tick on that and have a look at that. That is a bloody mint photo. We'll just do some more editing on this one. Go into tools, tune image. We'll go say the ambience, we'll increase the ambience a little bit, just to bring some more detail out of those um, leaves that are in there. Increase the shadows a little bit, that brings some more detail into the core. Hit the tick on that, uh, go to white balance. I'm going to go to the tint and decrease the tint a little bit because it'll add more green to those leaves. And I don't think I'm gonna do anything more to that. Hit the tick and we're done. This is what it looks like. Obviously it doesn't need to be a tree, it can be anything you want. It can be a vehicle, anything at all. And you combine these photos just like that. And to pull that sort of a photo out of an iPhone, it's pretty bloody impressive. The same rules apply, or the same principles apply, when we do the post. The post with the star trails around it, and that photo looked like this.
If you're into these sort of photos and this sort of photography with your iPhone and any other mobile phone, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do two videos each and every week. Head over to phonephotoschool.com.au. I've got a heap of presets over there, a heap of other tutorials and reviews on gear and stuff that I use here on a pretty regular basis. Also, if you're on Facebook, I'll put a link down the bottom. We've got a Facebook group for all you bloody legends out there that subscribe to this channel. We share a lot of photos on there and give each other tips and tricks and stuff about how we've achieved the sort of photos that we've done. That's it for today, guys. We've well and truly gone over five minutes. I'll see you next week. Catch you later.